Singapore Civic District Guide Sparky is here to help you find your way around. With some of Singapore's most notable historic buildings and spaces located here, the Civic District has become a place of arts, culture and lifestyle. Join Sparky on a guided tour of museums, events and exhibits and go on an interactive journey through the arts. Embark on an adventure with Sparky and learn fun facts as you discover public artworks nestled amongst the skyscrapers and national monuments. Take a stroll through the scenic parks or take a cultural walk through the district to see some of Singapore's most historic landmarks. And get Sparky's trusted recommendations for the best places to eat and shop within the district. Check out Sparky's video tours if you don't have time to explore all that the Civic District has to offer or if you're far away and wish you were here. With Sparky, your Civic District Guide, get personalised recommendations, explore art and cultural offerings, learn fun facts, and discover the best shopping and dining spots in Singapore's Civic District. Come experience Singapore's Civic District as you hop from site to site on one of Singapore's sidecars. Take a ride in a hand restored vintage Vespa sidecar and experience Singapore's sights, sounds and flavours up close. With the ever personable drivers and guides, learn fun facts about this historic Civic District and how it has been transformed into a vibrant arts and cultural hub in the center of the city today.
Take in the splendor of this historical quarter that is home to gazetted monuments, world-class museums, and art centers. It's a one-of-a-kind tour. Come experience the Civic District in a fun way. Raffle City Singapore is a premium integrated development in the heart of Singapore, right above the City Hall Interchange Station. It features a shopping mall, an office tower, a convention center, and two five-star hotels providing convenience and a multifaceted shopping and dining experience. A thoughtful curation of specialty stores and experiential concepts invokes a sense of wonder and imagination, creating a shopping oasis that caters to different needs all in one location. Raffle City is a tastemaker, offering a seamless shopping experience that is one of a kind, embodying elegance and redefining modern luxury. The mall offers a wide range of international brands for the discerning individual who enjoys the finer things in life. Discover an exquisite timepiece or treat yourself to a collection of fine art. Let us help you find the perfect item to complement your lifestyle. Whether you're looking for a timeless classic or something new and unique, Raffle City has it all. Take the time to pamper yourself and treat yourself to something special. Visit unique beauty concept stores that offer a variety of products, tailored services, curated interactive displays, and enjoy a personalized shopping experience. Find the perfect products to help you feel and look your best. Fashion is all about defining your style. From sportswear to fashion apparels to bags, shoes, and travel essentials, there are endless options to choose from. With the latest trends and styles available, whether you're looking for one item or outfitting an entire wardrobe, you can find it all here. Take a break from shopping and enjoy a leisurely lunch with friends, a gourmet meal with family, or share a romantic meal with your partner. From traditional local dishes to international cuisine to gourmet restaurants to chic cafes and decadent desserts, Raffle City is a foodie's paradise. Whatever you're craving and occasion, the mall has something to offer that will excite your taste buds. The tourist lounge located at level 65 of the Swiss Hotel The Stanford offers a view to die for, providing a space for visitors to unwind and enjoy Singapore sights from a vantage point. And as part of the mall's tourist privilege program, tourists get to enjoy a variety of shopping and dining deals. Visitors to the mall can also benefit from Raffle City's connectivity to other parts of Singapore via the MRT and other convenient public transport options. Raffle City is a lifestyle destination that offers an unparalleled shopping and dining experience. With its range of curated local and international brands, the mall is the perfect place for you. Looking forward to seeing you at Raffle City, Singapore.
Whoever said money can't buy happiness has never been to IMM. Let's go. This is Singapore's largest outlet mall. And the best thing is they all offer up to 80% discounts on international brands all year round. And to get here is easy. Just take the short walk from Jurong East MRT station via the Jaywalk Link Bridge. Food, glorious food. If you can name it, you can eat it right here at IMM. I think I'll start with some Asian fusion. Just look at this. Bali Thai's famous seafood Pad Thai noodles. I'm finally ready to hunt for a whole new wardrobe. But where better place to start than a woman's most important accessory, the handbag. Pay attention, gents. Check out Coach for an unparalleled collection of quality and craftsmanship at irresistible discounts. Visit Furla, where you'll find the perfect bag for any occasion. This chic design was especially created for this store. Head over to Kate Spade, New York for something playfully sophisticated. I probably have enough already, but I cannot miss Outlet by Club 21. This outlet features a well-curated collection of both men's and women's apparel. Ooh, I found the perfect dress. From heels to flats, and wedges to sneakers, Charles and Keith has the perfect fit for you at discounted prices. A lady can never have too many shoes. Shopping is a very physical activity. Luckily, there's an abundance of athleisure wear at IMM too. At Under Armour, you can kit yourself from head to toe while saving up to 50% off recommended retail prices. If you're a visiting tourist, be sure to pick up the IMM Tourist Privilege Booklet at the customer service counter on level one to enjoy exclusive offers. And if all that isn't enough to satisfy your shopping appetite, you could always head over to Westgate or J-Cube Malls, which are just a short walk away from IMM. IMM, Westgate and J-Cube are the ultimate mega mall experiences in Singapore. It's been a fantastic day of retail therapy and exercise. I've got all this to take home and I've saved more than I've paid. Better get a cab. Visit IMM, Singapore's largest outlet mall today and experience shopping like never before. I remember back in the olden days, our great-grandmothers, doesn't matter we are Chinese, Malay, Indian or Eurasian, they walk by us. It was something that united and gave us a shared identity and I wanted to bring that back. Kebaya by Ratiana is located along the bustling Busra Street, which is home to the historic Masjid Sultan. I wanted to make kebayas elegant, comfortable and feminine. None of my kebaya are mass-produced, and I would say every piece of our kebaya tells a story. There's a lot of history in Kampung Glam. There used to be a lot of tailors and fabric shops in this area. It makes me really happy to share my love and knowledge of kebaya with my customers and still preserve a little slice of our history. My family's history is deeply embedded within Kampung Glam. My maternal grandfather, whom I was very close to, was a Dutch-trained diamond cutter who came and traded in Baghdad Street. And my paternal grandfather, who hailed from Sumatra, used to run a nasi padang stall around here. It felt right that I started my own business here too. All Things Delicious is a halal certified bakery cafe located in a conservation shop house at the heart of Kampung Glam. We are known not just for our iconic baked goods, 
but also for our chef-prepared comfort foods. Our menu is inspired by the melting pot of the community in Kampung Glam. We believe everyone can have their cake and all things delicious too. Today, old and new businesses coexist within Kampung Glam and I love it. It's like we have our own ecosystem. I hope to continue to create memories for the new generations to come. My interest in vinyl records started when I was a child when I would listen to vinyl records owned by my parents and my uncle. Mostar Records owns a record store, an independent record label and a vinyl record pressing label. We are the authorised dealer and the distribution hub in Asia for Thirdman Records which is owned by Jack White from the White Stripes. For the store, I wanted it to be an intimate and welcoming place for people to explore and experience music on vinyl. In 2017, we took the plunge and started our own label to discover and represent local and overseas musicians. We had been releasing our own vinyl records for the past two years. Mosta Records is an extension of myself, where I share my passion and experience in this industry. It's a place where musicians can come and perform, where vinyl collectors can indulge in their hobby and where music enthusiasts can discover new genres of music. Every month, I block out an afternoon in my calendar. This afternoon is dedicated to just wondering, exploring and discovering. So every week I carve out a day where I just go out wondering, without a plan, looking for a new adventure. I call it my day of inspiration. One of my favourite places to wander is the Civic District. It has a bit of everything that I love. Art, theatre, museums, nature, architecture, great food and drinks and so much more. We start my day of inspiration right here at the Queen Elizabeth Walk at the Esplanade Park. Let me just show you what I like about this stretch. There are a few places in Singapore where I am so reminded of both our past and present. On one side is the modern architecture of the present and here you can find historic landmarks that remind us of our journey to get here. Believe it or not, this is Singapore's first and oldest underpass, built in 1964. I've been here all the time never noticed. Some of Singapore's best theatre and musical events happen right here in the Victoria Theatre. I love to look at its architecture. It's such a beautiful building. The Asian Civilization Museum is one of my favourite places to take a deep dive into our past. But today, I want to focus on the present. There is a sculpture nearby that I really, really love. Come with me, I'll show you. And this is it. This is a bronze sculpture called The Five Boys by the River right outside the iconic Fullerton Hotel. So I believe the sculpture captures the yesteryears as well as this kampong spirit. The Civic District is really where modern Singapore began. But even after so many years, the spirit of those boys, the first generation, is still alive in the Civic District. There is just so much going on. Hey! Hi there! I'm doing good! I'm really excited! So there are many ways to get around the Civic District and this is the choice method to do it. Do it! I love this spot. You get a great view, you're just by the river, and it's great for people watching too. Well, all at the same time while you're enjoying a good cup of coffee and some cake. Sunsets never fail to inspire me, and this is one of my favorite spots to take it all in. 
Art doesn't just belong in museums or in theaters. It can also be in a beautifully plated dish or in nature or in the environment around us. I think while wandering the Civic District today, I do feel art is everywhere. Home to some of Singapore's most iconic art exhibitions, I spent many hours wandering through the rooms of the National Gallery. But today, I am here for a different reason. Come with me. At Violet Un, Singapore's culinary history is served to you in a beautiful, stunning setting that captures the vibrancy of Peranakan culture. Mm. Peranakan food is just synonymous to the Southeast Asian region. It's made out of so many different ingredients from a variety of different cultures. In many ways, you could say it's art on a plate. truly inspiring day today at the Civic District and I think you and I would both agree that we are surrounded with so much art in our daily lives and as an artist I highly recommend that you discover this art of living.
Interesting idea, Captain. <laughs> oh, smash! When people think about perfumes, they're most closely associated with the big French brands. But cultures that have the most links to the art of perfumery, I would say, are the Arabic cultures and actually the Indian cultures. I'm actually in this trade because of my grandfather. He started a perfume shop here in the 1930s. A lot of what you see over here, we used to just keep it in the back room. You know, it's a messy process. Uh, but now people want to see the process more and more, like an open kitchen. People wa want to see what happens. By doing it this way, you actually become a part of the process and uh, you get to choose your ingredients. It's not just a finished product that you're buying, but you know, you've inserted yourself into the process as well. Something fresh and clean, like, you know, clean cotton, bed linen. Uh, like clean skin? Yes, yeah. clean skin. I think it needs a bit more pepper. Bottle it up for me, please. I hope that people start to see perfumes as an experience rather than just as a finished product that you pick up off a shelf. Museum of Toys, a collection is made up of toys from more than 40 countries. The countries are like Bulgaria, even made in Singapore toys. We have no windows in this museum, and the huge facade behind is to protect from the harmful rays of the sunlight because our toys are all in mint or near mint condition. We showcase about more than 8,000 pieces of toys over here. This is less than 10% of the owner's collection. Uh, remaining 90% we store in warehouses. A famous freediver once said that scuba divers dive to look around and freedivers dive to look within, and that really spoke to me. I went to Hawaii, the big island of Kona, and I tried um, just diving off of shore. All of a sudden, I could hear the humpbacks offshore. So loudly, they were reverberating in my chest. You couldn't hear them from the surface, and you wouldn't have been able to hear them if you were scuba diving. And so I thought, oh wow, this is really amazing. You get these incredible experiences. I should try this. And so that's where I started. I'm Chris. I would describe myself as being post-corporate. I used to work for a company, and um, now I'm doing things for myself. Freediving can change someone's life, um, and has changed my life. Um, it is a mind-body discipline. It opens up experiences that are not available to everybody. In fact, only a tiny fraction of the world will ever be able to experience the things that you can see and feel while you're freediving.
You will never find a place like this in Singapore. Even though this place is constantly changing, the kampung spirit lives on. Royal Fragrances is a shop specializing in high quality bespoke perfumes located along Bussara Strait. My son and I run Royal Fragrances together and we create and sell our own range of perfume and incense products. Our special product is called Bahor which is wood infused with perfume. What is so special about our Bahor is that we have it made only for us with our special scents and flavours. You will never find it anywhere else in Singapore. The other unique thing about our products is that our perfumes are alcohol free. Like Royal Fragrances, many of the businesses around here have been here for a very long time. I have spent my entire life living and working in this district. Nowhere else will you find a place where the community spirit is so strong. The name Sate Ba means three pieces of meat in Hokkien. It is also a play on the Malay word Sate. Sate Ba Yakitori serves BBQ and skewer food with twist. Our restaurant is along Bali Lane, a popular snack spot in Kampong Glam. This place comes alive at night and has such a vibe. I was trained as an architect but found my passion in FMB instead. Without any prior experience in F&B, I spent two years under various BBQ and yakitori chefs to learn the trade from scratch. Although the hours are long and the job is physically demanding, I enjoy meeting people from all walks of life and some have also become close friends of mine. This is a place for families, friends, colleagues to get together, enjoy a hearty meal, have a drink and distress after a long day. Hi, my name is Simon Wong and I'm an entrepreneur with a background in branding and design. Right now we're sitting on the butterfly bench, which is a memorial bench to my late wife, Teiki. Uh, we're outside the Asian Civilizations Museum. Uh, National Heritage Board has uh, donated these 150-year-old gallery floorboards, which just happen to be the right shape and proportion for her bench. Several years ago, a friend of mine decided it would be a great idea to build 
sidecars. So we started making use of the sidecars in, in, in our events. So we used them to, to raise funds for, again, for various, uh, various charities. And after a while, we, we kind of realized if my wife had survived, we wouldn't solely be working for cancer-related charities. All along, we've been using the sidecars for, for, for events uh, and, and, as you know, for fundraisers. For the sidecar tours, it's usually visitors to Singapore. So we do get a good percentage of locals as well, and they're, they're very curious to see Singapore in a, in a different way. Vespers are, are, are very, um, they're very special. You know, they, they, they draw out a reaction from people that motorbikes don't usually, they, you don't usually get it from a motorbike. You look at a Vespa, it's cute. And, it's, and then with a sidecar, it's really, really cute. So the first reaction of anyone is the smile. You know, and then the phone comes out and they just want to take a photo of it. You could be walking down the same street and you don't notice a lot of the, the details you know, around you. Um, you may not notice all the details on the buildings and so on, but for some reason when you're in a sidecar, suddenly your awareness switches back on and you start to see, you, know, you start to really notice all the details and you start to notice what's around you and what you're seeing on your visit to Singapore. So I think it's a lot to do with the, the, the change of format and it's, uh, it's a very, very unique format, so you do notice. I grew up in Kampong Gelam. Back then, it was really a kampong. Everyone knows everyone. 
Each year during Ramadan, the entire kampung will get together to take pictures in front of the Sultan Mosque after our eight prayers. Rumah Makan Minang serve Minang food, the cuisine of Minangkabau people from West Sumatra, Indonesia, where my grandmother originated from. We specialize in nasi padang and our most famous dishes is the beef rendang and our signature green balado, which is served in Shangri-La Hotel, Singapore. In the 1950s, my grandmother set up a nasi padang stall at Kanda Street. The stall was built with wooden planks. Now, almost 80 years later, our current restaurant, Rumah Makan Minang, sits in a shop house, directly opposite the site where my grandmother's stall used to be. Rumah Makan Minang is still a family-run business today. This place has been my home and my kampung for the last 40 years. There is no other place in Singapore like Kampung Gelam, and it will be our legacy for the next generation. Meisan Ikoku is a creative dining restaurant located along Kandaha Street that serves modern Japanese cuisine and bespoke cocktails. To me, food is all about balancing flavor. We're known for our omakase, creative maki, and handcraft sushi and sashimi. My favorite dish is our taco ibi with house-made crispy tacos filled with ama ibi tempura, nori, and kimchi. At our second level restaurant, we are well known for bespoke cocktails. We custom design cocktails for each customer based on their palettes. You can also see the wall of NFC where people can buy both cameras and digital art. And over our rooftop, you find the best spot in Singapore with a view of historic Kampong Glam neighborhood. Just like the balancing flavor here at Mason Ikoku, you will also experience the marrying of the old and new. Welcome to The Projector. We're on the fifth floor of the Golden Mile Tower in what feels like a car park, probably because we are in a car park, but inside we're gonna find one of the shining lights of Singapore's creative art scene. So let's go check it out. The Projector is in the, currently the only independent cinema space in Singapore. We're kind of like off the beaten track as you probably found out. Yeah, I did find that out. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to get here, but uh, it's a rewarding experience. This unique building once housed a 1,500-seat cinema called the Golden Theatre, making it the largest in Singapore. 
The projector retains the original walls, the floors and the seat mechanisms and it's this mix of old and new that really gives the space authenticity. I think the interesting fact was that it used to show propaganda films as well, North oh, okay. Korean films, and then it became like a soft porn kind of cinema. But the seats are completely new. Um, <laughs> this is where we show most of our more serious uh, art house films. As you can see, it's more intimate. The other room was very green. I assume this is the, the red room, is it? Yeah, this is the red room. We do hold the uh, more fun films down here. We want people to have fun down here, just come here, have a good time, have a drink. But this is a, a bit of a change of scenery. I can't say I've ever found a bar in a car park before. Yeah, this is one of our newer additions uh, within the last couple of months. This is where we hold most of our after parties for the films that we had. Even if you're not a film buff, the projector is well worth a visit for its old world charm. And the fact that after the screening, well, you can even go for a party in the car park. It all started from the day when my father passed me his old cameras, you know. He got interest towards photography. So he said, okay, you, you want to continue photography, you want to take something, you can have it as my presence. And that's the day I started. One of my cousins, he was an artist. The day once camera come in, all the painter who do realistic picture, the portrait picture, everybody lost their job. So based on his profession, cameras are their enemies. Then I said, okay, why don't we do something new? We accumulate all your enemies, put it at one place, and we do it in a unique way what others have not done it. Then he say, it's on, let's try, and that's how all it started. Uh, if you take a PGN camera, it took about eight to nine years for us to found it. It is designed in such a way that a PGN can carry. I love all my collection. One is world's first button camera. About 100 years back, they can create such a unique thing. There is a button you can put in your coat and they can control it here. The button can open and take a picture for you. See how clever those days the spies were. If you talk about a unique piece, yeah, we do have a machine gun used by Japanese military in the World War II. They use this gun to train the Air Force people. If you see, there is a lens. If you click, you don't get bullets. It will shoot you. I don't believe in a shortcut can make something good. Bridgetus is one of my personal brands and now I start to let it run by all my apprentices. My goal is to bring back the original house to make a good suit, how real tailors must be. We use the best quality fabric and also we are using the best interlining fabric. It takes about 8 weeks to finish a bespoke suit. After taking measurement, we will start to do the pattern drafting. One or two fitting sessions will be done and after revising the draft, it will take us almost 80 hours to finish the jacket by hand. We are trying to get something rich to the customer demand and request what he wants. So in the whole processing, the customer can enjoy very personalised service. Many of the tailors have already got out from the traditional. They find an easier way, faster way to process a suit. Don't care about what is the quality will turn out. Nowadays, not many people are willing to carry on the craft. It requires a lot of time and effort. I found that tailoring is what interested me the most. In fact, I love the traditional craftsmanship. So I don't wish the craft to die. We don't believe shortcut can get a good suit. So every step we are followed exactly. So that's my idea to start the precious. I came to Singapore in 2014 when I was looking for a space to set up asphalt. I visited Haji Lane and I felt in love with the place. Kampong Glam for me has such a vibe and I love the interesting mix of people and life here. I started asphalt back in 2009 when I was living at this time in Switzerland. 
as well as a sustainable fashion brand. We do not produce fabrics. Instead, we use fabrics that have been discarded by the fashion world. We try to source locally and we work directly with craftsmen and women who specialize in embroidery, in beading, weaving or dyeing. This way, we ensure they are paid the right price for their work. Each of our pieces is handmade and are one of a kind. As a French Senegalese, we grow up in a culture where we made our own clothes. I remember shopping for fabrics and designing my own clothes. Fashion design is something that has always been part of my life and I'm happy to share my philosophy, my creation with my customer. Instagrammable. Being Instagrammable is all well and good, but the food's got to be great as well. Here we have the cauliflower furikake, which smells super enticing. I can't wait to dig in. Vegetables never tasted so good. Got the grilled portobello salad right in front of me and I can't wait to tuck in. Here's the eggs benedict and the eggs are the best in Singapore. Organic grade A eggs. Oh, check that out. Check this out, you've got a whole soft shell crab to yourself. No wonder it's a bestseller. There's no better combination than waffles, chicken, watermelon and maple syrup. Nice coffee flavor, and you see the color change as you drink it. Really fun stuff. Here is the boozy Sadap Tendo milkshake. That kick of rum at the end. I'm a fan of this. Sinhin Chuanqi is one of the oldest haberdashery stores in Singapore selling garments and fashion accessories. In the 1960s, my grandfather was a salesman who would cycle across town to visit customers around the area. 
He registered the business in 1974 and our family has been running the business ever since. We have thousands of products and we have been told that a visit to the store feels like a kid going into the candy shop. Over the years, we have grown together with our customers. Now we have three generations of a family visiting the shop to make their purchases. Aside from being a familiar site along North Ridge Road, Singhing Chuanqi has also become a meeting place for our regular customers. It is a heaven for our new generations of designers and fashion change makers. <sighs> my hands are still tingling and my heart is still beating really fast right now. It was amazing. When I accidentally hit someone, it really felt like there was a zombie touching me. It feels so big in there. It's intense, it's scary, and it's a workout. It was insane. It was so much fun. It was awesome. I felt like I was in a zombie apocalypse myself. <laughs> It felt so real. It felt like you were walking upside down. I was so into the game. We just kept shouting. It was out of the ordinary. It was so fun. Not much longer now, Raph. We just Please! Need to have a no to more market. shopping! Um, hello? Wanna escape? Where? Somewhere awesome! Hell yeah! Woo! All right! Yeah, Singapore is trampoline parks, but bounce is so much more than that. Woo! All right! Yo, Ruffy, can you do a flip? No, can you show me how? So all you need to do, one, up! Flipping is just one of the things you can learn at Flight Academy, where one of Bounce's awesome experts teach you how to do some super cool tricks. Good, Ruffy. Much better now. He's lost. Clear the 10 tricks on the freestyle list and get a free 2 for one voucher. It is as easy as the sit drop. Good. If you want even more of a challenge, check this out. Hope you're ready to lose to a kid. You gotta get it up! X Park is like Ninja Warrior, but way cooler. I know I make it look really easy, but seriously, this is not for wusses. some shopping but can we take a break for just an hour i know this great place they do aussie coffee it's just around the corner welcome to my home and these are my family our days are really relaxing most of the time, we like to bask in the sun, have some munchies, and once in a while, we have visitors. I like to think we are great hosts, though most of the time, we much prefer to sit at great heights and judge them. And once in a while, we allow them to pet us, but just for a while. We still need to show them who's the real boss here. If you want, you can come visit too. But first, let me check my very, very busy schedule. See ya!
sun goes down and the lights come on, you want to give people an experience. There was one that actually made someone cry once. That was the first time I've ever experienced that here. I would draw music from Africa and uh, you know, I play stuff from Latin America. I play a bit of hip hop and like I'll move in and out to kind of fit the, the space. Yeah. To me, I'm, I'm so lucky to have a view like that. From the time I started work here, this is the one thing that always I always marvel at and I never get tired of this view. The club sound beyond 10 p.m. is always a little bit more mainstream, a little bit more digestible for uh, the people who come up here. Because you not only have tourists, you have hotel guests, yeah. and you do have people who want to club. I think there's something for everyone. <laughs> good comments from from the crowd everyone's like oh you know it's really cool to hear music from my country and you know like c'est la vie being quite an international uh, destination when i was 15 years old i used to work as an office boy in arab street i remember in the 1970s this whole area used to be street hawkers Today, I own two restaurants in Kampung Gulam. Nazarene is a Turkish restaurant that I started in 2012. We serve authentic Turkish cuisine. Some of our popular dishes include lamb mandi rice, our Nazarene mandi platter and kebab. Our meat is prepared and marinated overnight, usually for more than 12 hours before they are barbecued and served fresh the next day. Another popular item is the bakalava, which is a traditional Turkish pastry dessert. We hand make more than 100 pieces each day. It is amazing how much of my personal history is tied to this area. From the time I was a young boy till now and even for the future, Kampung Gulam will always be a place I call home. But it's one of those things where you, you never actually make the decision to start it. And that was probably the most important part of this whole process was actually just committing to the fact that I was going to spend years. I, I didn't know it was going to be three years, but I knew it was going to be a long time. And I went through periods of confidence and, and, and near depression on this ship. If you look at something for so long and you spend so much time working on it, you lose all confidence that it's going to be of interest to anybody, anybody else. So that's why I guess I was so excited when the film was released and, and people sort of appreciated the work that had gone into it. So it started to feel a bit more worthwhile again. And that it wasn't so much that I wanted to show off or show people the, the city growing. I think I actually wanted to see it myself. Singapore's got nowhere to, nowhere, nowhere to grow. It's not like a lot of places in the world where cities sprawl and get bigger. In Singapore, things tend to get taken down before they get built up. It has to be creative in how it plans for development. And so for me, that's, that's a story. It's like, it's like the modernization of Singapore and just seeing it so almost reinvent itself every, every few years. The way that I wanted to shoot it, I didn't just want to have permanent cameras which would create a, a very common time-lapse effect where you see a cloud that appears and a cloud that disappears. I wanted the whole film to flow organically. So I had to do a lot of planning and started with about 30 core shots. By the end of the film it grew to about 70 locations around the city. And then it took a lot of, a lot of discipline. And it can be a little bit of a lonely existence when you spend three, three and a half years working on a project. I don't think, for example, even my wife and my daughter really know how much went into this film. But I really do enjoy, enjoy being like an outside observer. Uh, and even though the techniques have changed throughout all of my films, there's still a sense that it's almost like you're in a separate place when you're looking at the, at, at the city. 
Um, so I'm not really getting in people's faces with cameras, I'm more just somebody who's sort of quietly off to the side looking at the world from a, from a distance.